Stop the war! Stop Russia! 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 Stop the war! We always welcome people who might come to us with questions. We even welcome those who come to us with their own assessment of the situation, even if it's different to ours. Because we are able to prove to anybody who wants to ask those questions to others and to themselves that the cause of Ukraine is just, that the cause of the Ukrainian people is for a better future, a freer future, a future of nuclear demilitarization and not of nuclear saber rattling and nuclear genocide. The Ukrainians have done the biggest sacrifice in human history in the name of world peace. They have given up the third biggest nuclear arsenal in the world in exchange of nothing more but a peace agreement from Russia. And what has happened to us after that? Russia cannot be trusted. Russia cannot be negotiated with. Russia cannot be allowed to do as they please. When will the world finally learn these lessons? When it will be already too late? Perhaps when nuclear weapons strike London, then people will understand. Hopefully not. However, we need to keep reminding people of this situation, my friends. Because people sometimes don't notice issues until they are apparent, until they are unable to ignore them any longer for shame. It would be far better to take care of these issues while they are small, while they are insignificant, whilst the West holds the cards, whilst the West holds the influence worldwide. Unfortunately, the many isolationists and the so-called conservatives who claim that wars abroad do not touch this country, do not influence this country. They continue to speak and they continue to be heard by a minority of people, true. But that minority, unfortunately, is growing. With political parties such as the AFD, in Germany, a very thinly laid, very, very thinly veiled neo-Nazi party in our days. Very sad, truly. However, people tend to commit the same mistakes again and again if they are not told what they are doing, if they do not have access to the information. And even though nowadays we have access to almost all information, all kinds of information all over the place, an era of information is also an era of disinformation. This is what we need to understand. This is why we have to develop our immunity to that disinformation. An immunity to the conspiracy theories continually spewed out by the Russian propaganda machine and immunity to the lies and to the deceit of those who want to kill us and destroy us, of those who want to take over our future and negate it so that they will have the power over the whole world. Those individuals, those terrorist states are your enemy, my friends. They are our enemy, the enemy of humanity, you could say the enemy of a better future for every human being on this globe. However, we can only face them head on if we understand what kind of evil we are facing. What kind of misinformation we are tackling. And we can only do that if we allow ourselves the possibility of being wrong 
and engage with the opposition and engage with people who might say some things we disagree with. However, there's a very big caveat to that, my friends. Many individuals, many apologists, many fools and russophiles have claimed many times that supposedly actions like that of Tucker Carlson, of him going to Moscow and interviewing, quote unquote, Putin, are actually an action based on free speech. Well, my friends, such ideas are idiotic. This is a bastardization of the term freedom of speech. There was nothing free in the questions that Tucker Carlson was asking Putin. They were all loaded questions, easy questions, to make sure that Putin answers them and presents himself in the most favorable light possible. That is what he did, that is what they planned, and that is what they've done. Don't be fooled by such theatrics, my friends. We need to see through this deceit. We need to see through these lies. Was there even one legitimate question that Tucker Carlson asked Putin? Did he ever ask him? Why Putin did not keep the agreements made by the Russian regime to Ukraine? Did he ask him why Putin would never mention the semi-alliance of the Soviet Union with Nazi Germany? Why Putin never mentioned the division of Poland between the Soviets and the Nazis? And you know, this is the truly, truly funny part of the whole speech of Putin. Putin did indeed mention the molotov rubinchov Treaty, but he never spoke about the fact that the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany had decided the fate of a country that did not belong to them. Instead, Putin claimed that the Polish, a nation that both the Soviets and the Nazis had invaded, had overplayed their hand that they had provoked Hitler to invade. What kind of idiocy is that, my friends? What kind of stupidity is it to mention a treaty that goes directly against your point and to not explain it enough so that people see what it truly means? Nay, my friends, this was not stupidity. This was on purpose. Putin did this to bring this illusion to everybody around the world that Russia supposedly never wanted this war, that supposedly they're the good guys, supposedly they're denazifying Ukraine by sending their own Nazi battalions to Ukraine to kill the Ukrainian people. I mean, it makes sense, truly, according to Putin. Except, it's a little bit difficult to believe in denazification when the people who are supposedly doing it are wearing swastika tattoos all over their body. A few days ago, a little picture surfaced of a captured Russian soldier who has over his left breast muscle a little tattoo of the Imperial Russian flag, black, yellow and white. And around that Russian imperial flag, he has a whole bunch of swastikas. Now that, my friends, that is the best example of this supposed denazification that Russia is doing in Ukraine. Sending Nazis to denazify others. What a farce. What an absolute clown show. Almost as good as the clown show perpetrated by the biggest clown of them all, Yevgeny Prigozhin, the man who thought he could make a little treaty with Putin and get away with his own challenge to Putin's authority. Look where that got him. Spoiler alert, it did not end very well for him. But my friends, we should all know this at this point. We should know this 
all of this situation, all of this information, because it's easily available. And I urge you all to look it up and be informed. Slava Ukraini! Slava Nazi! Ukraina! 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 Heroem Ukraini Trechi! Slava! 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 Друзі, наші ралі сьогодні закінчуються, але тільки на сьогодні. Ще пару оголошень, повторю, і деякі, може, нові. Пам'ятаємо, що 24 числа у нас відбувається марш незглавності. Всі збираємося з родинами у вишитих строях, збираємося на Мабл-Арч біля Спіка з Коне на годину 30 дня. Звідки? В другій годині маршуємо, вирушаємо до Трафальгар-сквер. Приблизний час прибуття – це четверта година, де буде віджіл і двогодинний віджіл за Україну і нагадати світові, що війна в Україні триває. Це перше оголошення. Just to remind the friends, tell your families, tell your friends, on the 24th of February we're going to have a march from Marble Arch, from Speaker's Corner, at 2 o'clock we organize marching onto the Trafalgar Square. Uh, the expected arrival time is about 4 p.m. So we gathering at half one and then uh, marching at 2 o'clock to the Trafalgar Square from where at 4 o'clock we'll have a vigil uh, for Ukraine and we will be there till approximate uh, finish time is about 6 p.m. So 4.40, uh, 4.45 to uh, sorry, 5.40 to 6 p.m. So that's what's going to be on the 24th of February. Another announcement. There will be no rally here on 23rd of February. We'll have another rally on 25th of February at the normal times. To remind everyone that our rally is here 6 to 8 p.m. every Wednesday, 6 to 8 p.m. every Friday, and 3 to 5 p.m. every Sunday. Three times a week six hours of your time for the Ukraine. It's important to remind the world that the war is not over. It's even more important for our defenders to feel the support of all the Ukrainians around the world. Regardless where we are, what we do. As long as we do work hard towards Ukraine, the victory will be ours. That's very important. Thank you. One more announcement is 25th of February at 7 p.m. in Ukrainian Catholic School, uh, Catholic Church at Duke Street, there will be the, bear with me, bear with me, I'll find the exact announcement. So, Requiem concert, uh, concert Requiem z Ukraine in our hearts, with Ukraine in our heart, will be organized at the Duke Street Ukrainian Catholic Cathedral at 7 p.m. on 25th of February. For those who are able to attend, willing to attend, come around, you can help a lot by donating your time and some money towards Ukraine. So that's 21st of February at 7 p.m. But our rallies here will be as usual except the next uh, uh, Friday, which will be postponed temporarily because we have an march on the next day. So. That's this announcement I wanted to share with you. They are on social media, there will be more coming up. They are regularly updated and posted. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's very important we're still here and we with Ukraine in our heart and we in our, uh, with our, on our lips and in our, with our hearts. Thank you very much. We're going to have a national anthem now. Thank you.
нації, Україна, Бороду все, Україна, Бороду все, Україна, Бороду все, нашим славним захисникам і захисницям тричі. Слава, слава, слава! Thank you. Thank you.